Hello, my friends. Love is not something that you feel. Love is something that you give. Love is an action word. Love is who you are. So how do you create and maintain love in a Christian marriage? Well, in this video, I will share with you how to create love that lasts. Let's have this conversation. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to our channel. I am Dorian, and this is Not Easy to Broken. On this channel, we help Christian couples create lasting love through effective communication, through biblical applicable principles, and through personal growth. Let's get right into it. Well, you're probably asking yourself, what do he know about creating love? What are you talking about? creating love. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Well, first, let me just let you know that I am married for 29 years. Yes, 29 years of marriage to my wonderful, amazing wife. I love her constantly keep growing and becoming a better version of me to honor my responsibility to God and to her in marriage. I also grew up with five sisters and four out of my five sisters are married. As a matter of fact, my, my older sister was married, but her marriage didn't work. So I've been around all my sisters that have been married. Four of them have successful marriage. One of my sisters married for 27 years. One is married for 21 years. One is married for 13. And my younger baby sister is married for 11 years. So I have a wealth of knowledge and wisdom relating to love and marriage. So I don't just come on social media just to beat the air and just to start a YouTube channel just to go famous. No, I'm not into all of that. I'm about teaching biblical applicable principle that makes a marriage work. So again, how do you create love that lasts? Well, in order for you to create lasting love, to create love that lasts in your marriage, you have to do a couple of things. But let's, let's have a foundation here. First, you have to love God and you have to love yourself. I'm going to say it again. You have to love God and you have to love yourself. If you don't love God and you don't love yourself, you absolutely don't know how to create love. You know, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31, it tells us that the Sadducees, they came to Jesus and they asked a master of all the commandment in the Bible, which one is the most important? What is the greatest commandment? Jesus responded by saying that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And in verse 31, it says that the second is like unto the first. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus said that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. The Bible tells us to leave and cleave. So I believe that as a married person, your closest neighbor is your spouse. My friends, listen, I want to pause for a moment and ask you a big favor. If this video is adding some value to you, then do us a favor and hit that like button, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the best way that you can help support our channel. Thank you so much. Let's get right back into it. If you and your spouse are one, then the question is, how do you love yourself? The, the relationship that you have with your spouse, it is a reflection of the relationship that you have with yourself. The, the marriage that you have, it is a reflection of the two of you. So how do you really love yourself? If we're talking about love and how to create love, then we must understand who we are by understanding our relationship with God and the relationship that we have with ourselves. God is the author of love. And so if you want to know how to love, you have to connect to the source of love. God is the source of love. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, my friends, that he that loveth not knoweth not God, because God is love. Talk to me. God is love. His nature is love. His essence of being is love. Everything that God does, it flows from a place of love. And if we are connecting to God daily through reading the word, through meditating, and through praying, then we should be passionate about demonstrating love towards our spouse. Because if we connect to the source of love, which is God, then we cannot possibly run out of demonstrating love towards our spouse. If we're operating from a spiritual realm and not from the physical, we're supposed to be excited about sharing and demonstrating love. How do you love yourself? How do you trust yourself? It is all based on the kind of relationship that you have with God. See, here's the problem, guys. We as human beings, because of our sin nature, 
We're very selfish. We want things to be all about us. And in a marriage, it's not about you. In a marriage, it's about us. It's about we. It's about ours. It's about serving. It's about reparosity. It's about two people coming together as one for the greater good of the marriage. Sin allow us to be selfish when the Spirit of God wants us to be selfless. It is critical to the welfare and the upkeep of a great marriage, right? We need the help of God's Word to help us to become better person, better servant in our marriage. So now, if you really want to learn how to create love, this is what you have to do. These are some steps that you need to take in order for you to maximize the, the potential that you have to create love. Number one, give. Love is about giving. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved that he gave. I want you to listen to what I just said. For God so loved that he gave. For God so loved that he take. No. For, for God so loved that he want things. No. For God so loved that he gave. And if we are created in the image and in the likeness of God and have the character of God, then we must demonstrate love through giving. The true essence of love is not what you get, my friends. It's what you give. You don't love where you get. You love where you give. That's the reason why if a man is not investing in the marriage or if a wife is not invested in the marriage, they don't see the need to protect it. Because when you're given to a thing, it, it means something to you. The act of love, the act of giving, the act of serving, demonstrate loving, kind behavior. Remember what I said that the relationship that you have with your spouse, it's a reflection of the relationship that you have with yourself. I believe it's worth repeating. Some people are just in the getting business. You just want to get. You're just a taker. I mean, you just overdraft on your marital account because you have not poured into the marriage. You have to give back. And when you do so, it shows that you love. You, 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 listen, again, it's almost impossible to genuinely say that you are a lover if you are not given. Number two, you have to be trustworthy. To create love, you have to be a trustworthy person. Trust in a marriage is the foundation of a successful marriage. A, a matter of fact, trust in a marriage is like what oxygen is to your lungs. You can't breathe without it. You cannot survive without it. You need oxygen. You need trust. Trust in a marriage is like what a foundation is to a building. The building cannot stand without a foundation. The building cannot survive the test of time, the, 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 the storms and the, the hurricane and the earthquake and the wind, it needs a strong foundation. And trust is one of the pillar of a good marriage. No building can last without a strong foundation and no marriage can last without trust. If you are not a trustworthy person, you, you, you better get this thing right. You, you better get your mind right. You better go back to the drawing board and you better seek God. You better change your attitude, whatever is causing the, 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 the lack of trust. Fix it because your marriage is going to depend on it. Number three, growth. You have to focus on growth. Listen, my friends, personal growth is so critical. It is so important to create in love. You cannot possibly think that you can create love or you can, you can be in a marriage and you're still the same like you were when you got married. No. I've often said that when you get married, you get married to four people. The person you date, the person you court, the person you marry, and the person they're going to become because of marrying you. Can you honestly say that your spouse is better off because of you? Can you say that your spouse is a better human being or you are adding value to their lives because of you creating love in the marriage? Because if their life is not better because of you, you're creating a nightmare for them. And that's a problem. It is a problem for me. And it is also a problem for God. You have to focus on spiritual growth. You have got to grow. When you grow, everything around you grows, including your marriage. When you decide to grow and elevate your consciousness, everything around you decide to grow. I said all the time that when the tide rises, my friends, the ship rise, whether you're a tugboat, a rowboat, a, a cruise ship, it doesn't matter what kind of boat you are. When the tide goes up, you rise too. Are you rising? Are you elevating your, your relationship in marriage? Is your spouse growing with you? 
or are you growing apart? Think about that for a moment. Number four, communication. You cannot possibly create love without communication. Communication is also the oxygen in your marriage. It is important, my friends, to understand that the relationship that you're in right now, it is because of communication. You communicate, you relate, and you got into a relationship. If you're going to build a successful marriage, you also need to learn how to communicate. You have to become passionate about communication. If you don't know how to communicate, you don't know how to create love. Because you have to get the information. You have got to get the data from your spouse. And that information that you get from them based on how they desire to be loved, how they desire to be treated in the relationship, you get that information, you store that information, you activate that through your words and through your action, and it will help you, my friend, to connect on another level in your marriage, and in your relationship. But communication has to be important. Number five, transparency. Are you a transparent person? Is your life an open book? Can your spouse read any chapter of your life anytime they want? Or do they have to be wondering what you're doing behind the scene? Or do they have to search through your phone? Or if your phone is put down, they, they could just pick it up and and. Well, I'm not asking them to go to your phone. I think it's disrespectful to search your spouse's phone. But here's the question. Do they have access if they need to get to your phone? Do you lock it down because you are having some sort of virtual affair, talking with a person from the opposite sex with private conversation that your spouse don't know about? Is that, is that how you're rolling? Is that how you're doing marriage? Transparency is important. A matter of fact, to be honest with you, if you're not a transparent person, it is very difficult for you to create love because they have something to hide. Love does not keep any record. Love does not keep score. Love does not hide itself. Love, love is open. Love allows you to be free to be who you are. That's what true love is about. And number six, I talk about, you know, why you have to love God. I talk about why you have to be transparent. I talk about why you need to communicate. And in order for you to create love, number six, you have to forgive. Listen, there is no love without forgiveness and there's no forgiveness without love. You ain't perfect. You don't marry a perfect spouse. You ain't a perfect, polished person that you really think you are. Let me ask you a question. If God should allow your life to be played out on a projector for your spouse to see right now, if, if God should just bring a monitor and put it before your spouse, what would they really see? What kind of story would your timeline be telling? See, we have to learn to forgive. We, we have to learn to surrender our will to God and ask God to forgive us. And just like how we want God to forgive us, we too must forgive our spouse. You, I, I'll say it again. There is no love without forgiveness and there is no forgiveness without love. And so, my friends, you have got to serve. You have got to give. You have got to sacrifice. You have got to show up. But in order for you to create love, you have got to first have a relationship with God and a relationship with yourself. Well, my friends, if this video adds some value to you, please do us a favor. I'm going to ask you to share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. May God continue to bless you. And always remember that your marriage is not easily broken.